Welcome to our space of understanding and compassion, where we navigate the intricacies of relationships and foster lasting bonds. Recently, my brother, who is 15 years old, faced a distressing situation where he was falsely accused of inappropriate behavior, and it has deeply affected him. I'm 23, and our sister is 17. It's disheartening that such an incident occurred, and now I seek advice on how to help him through this challenging time. The incident occurred when I wasn't present, and my brother was in his room, engrossed in his phone. He got up to take out the garbage and returned to lie down on his bed. At that moment, he noticed the family dog coming out of his room, but he didn't pay much attention to it. Later, our sister discovered that some clothes were missing and, upon searching for them, found them in my brother's room, wet and slimy. Without giving him a chance to explain, she immediately informed our parents, and unfortunately, they jumped to conclusions, assuming the worst about him. An intense argument ensued between our parents and my brother, leading to hurtful things being said. My mother even expressed that she found him weird but didn't expect him to be that weird, and my dad accused him of being a predator. As a result, our parents asked me to have him stay with me for a few days. When I went to pick him up, he appeared visibly upset and remained silent throughout his stay. He mostly stayed in the room only coming out for dinner, while skipping breakfast and lunch. His red eyes indicated that he had been crying. It's crucial that we support my brother through this difficult time and clear his name from the false accusations. I'm seeking advice on how to approach the situation and help him cope with the emotional distress he's experiencing. Any guidance on making things better for him would be greatly appreciated. I've never seen my brother cry before. When he's upset, he usually puts on a stone-faced expression, so the hurtful words must have really affected him. Towards the end of the week, his parents called me and said they wanted to talk to him, so they came over. Before their arrival, I tried to reach out to him, but he ignored me. When his parents arrived, they apologized to him for the misunderstanding. As the week progressed, they noticed more of my sister's clothes in his room until one day, my dad caught the dog with my sister's clothes. My brother just acknowledged it with an okay and went home. I attempted to ask my parents if he could stay with me longer, but they didn't see it as necessary. Later, I received a call asking about his whereabouts because he had apparently been spending most of his days locked in his room at their house. To make him feel better, I'm seeking advice on how to support him during this difficult time. Some good news is that he can stay with me until Sunday. I had to bend the truth a bit with his parents to convince them to let him come. I emphasize that he needs to get out of the house and that it would be an opportunity for him to escape the monotony of sitting in one place for online school. After some initial skepticism, they agreed, and I managed to get him just in time before he fell asleep. I'm planning to spend some quality time with him this week, although my financial situation is tight, so it will mostly involve activities around the house. During the drive, I attempted to engage him in conversation, and he finally opened up a bit, saying he's fine, and we chatted about his school. He's currently staying in the guest room, and things seem to be okay for now. I'll also be checking the comments on this post to see if there's any additional advice from others on how to support him during this challenging period. It's clear that my parents' handling of the situation was far from ideal, and their words have left a significant impact on him. I hope, with time and understanding, we can help him heal and overcome this difficult experience. It is evident that they have wrongly labeled him as a pervert, and it's terrible that they allowed him to stay with you, another one of his sisters, after accusing him unjustly. This situation indicates that there may be deeper issues within the family concerning him, and that's truly distressing. He is just a 15-year-old, and he doesn't deserve to be subjected to such abusive treatment. I sincerely hope that he starts responding to your text soon. Perhaps you could take him out to do some enjoyable activities to show him that you believe in his innocence. The situation is truly awful, and my heart goes out to him. Taylor Loves Henry emphasizes the need for your parents to apologize to your brother, and I couldn't agree more. 
Their accusations have broken him, and seeking the help of a therapist for him as soon as possible could be crucial. Frog's Legs 12 highlights the gravity of the damage caused by your parents' actions. They have shattered his trust in them, and healing that breach won't be easy. It's apparent that they had already made up their minds before the accusation, and this might have been influenced by your other sister's actions. Consequently, he might also be feeling hurt and betrayed by her at the moment. Given the circumstances, your brother needs space and time to heal. Being at home and having to interact with your parents and sister is likely causing him more pain, even though they are his immediate family. If I were in your position, I would find the courage to tell my parents that their behavior was inexcusable. I'd also have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him to see if he would like to stay with me for a few weeks. Assure him that you are there to support him no matter what. At 15, being accused of such things has undoubtedly taken a toll on his self-esteem and sense of self-worth, so he truly needs time and understanding to heal from this traumatic experience. At some point, it will be crucial to offer him reassurance that he is not the weirdo he has been unfairly labeled as. Being there for him during this difficult time is vital. Regarding your parents, it's evident that they would benefit from counseling, and even the babysitter might need some guidance. Their actions have caused significant harm, and now they must face the consequences of their behavior. Being a 15-year-old dealing with such false accusations is undoubtedly challenging, he found himself in a tough situation, and it's truly disheartening to hear that your father said he raised a predator. It's clear that your brother is innocent, and it's regrettable that the misunderstanding escalated to such a hurtful extent. It's essential for him to know that slobber from a dog is nothing like what was wrongly implied, and it's a mistake not to recognize that. Let's now turn our attention to the update post, where hopefully we'll find some positive developments and clarity. In the update, I've been asked to provide information on the situation. Many of you suggested that my brother should stay with me, and although I did have him at my house for a week, I had to take him back to our parents' house this morning. As mentioned in the last update, he spent the first Monday at my place, primarily staying in his room, and our initial conversation didn't yield much progress. However, I managed to convey to him that our parents were wrong and that he was not strange or abnormal. Although he maintained a stoic expression, I hope he understood the message. On Tuesday, he mostly stayed in his room, but when I offered to go to McDonald's, he came out to eat at the table. During our conversation, which started as random topics, he started showing more interest when we discussed my Xbox. It's a small step but at least he's opening up a bit and engaging in conversation. I'll continue spending time with him and being there for him in any way I can. He needs support and understanding during this challenging period, and I hope to gradually help him rebuild his self-esteem and confidence. During our time together, we ended up discussing Madden, and he enthusiastically shared how skilled he was at the game. Despite my lack of interest in sports games, Preferring games like Cuphead or Cartoon Games, I bought Madden on Wednesday and asked if he wanted to play. To my dismay, the game seemed to cheat right from the start, with my player fumbling the ball, and he easily outplayed me. Surprisingly, he found joy in the game, even laughing a few times during our matches. We spent a good part of Wednesday immersed in gameplay. Thursday followed a similar pattern to Wednesday, with us playing Madden and engaging in more conversations. Although I initially wanted to go to the movies, the ongoing presence of COVID prevented us from doing so. Instead, we opted for Netflix, and while he still spent some time in his room, he gradually started coming out more. On Friday, I decided to approach the situation again and talk to him about it. I explained that I intended to talk to our parents and help them understand how their actions had been hurting him. I also brought up the idea of seeking professional help, as he had suggested earlier. However, he asked me not to discuss it with our parents, expressing that it would be better if the matter was left untouched. It was a bit surprising, but I respected his wishes as there wasn't much else I could do. Subsequently, we decided to take a walk together. 
Initially hesitant, he eventually agreed to join me after I convinced him. Our walk provided a chance for us to spend some quiet time together, and even though we didn't explicitly discuss the troubling situation, I hoped that being there for him in this way would offer some support and comfort. Throughout our time together, I've noticed some positive changes, him opening up more and finding enjoyment in activities, like playing Madden. While the situation remains serious and challenging, I'll continue to be there for him, providing support and companionship as he navigates these difficult emotions. We spent more time talking, and it made me realize that I should make an effort to communicate with my brothers and sisters more often. During these conversations, I noticed he seemed happier, which was a positive change. On Saturday, or yesterday, we decided to switch things up and play some random games I had, opting for a break from Madden. While my game collection is not extensive, I believe he had a good time. However, as dinner approached, he grew somewhat quiet again. When I asked him what was bothering him, he expressed that he wasn't ready to return home yet. I didn't know how to respond, so I suggested talking to our parents to see if there was anything we could do. Nevertheless, he declined the idea again. Instead, I assured him that he could come to my house whenever he wanted. Today, he's back at his house, and although I wanted to discuss things with our parents, I respected his wish for me not to do so. As for the suggestion of getting him a therapist, he also turned down that idea. I reached out to my sister to check on her, and she mentioned that she tried to apologize to my brother, but he ignored her. However, I'll address that matter one step at a time. That's essentially how the week unfolded, and overall, he seemed much happier than the previous week. We continued to communicate through texts, and he expressed a desire to come back sometime next week. It's heartwarming to see the positive impact of being there for him during this challenging time. I'm trying to provide him with the space to rebuild himself and regain his confidence. I hope it's the right approach, and I genuinely appreciate the kind words from UOP. As for everyone else, I'm curious to know how you would have handled this situation if you were in my position as the sister or brother. Sharing perspectives can be insightful and helpful in supporting my brother as he continues to heal and overcome the difficult experience he's been through. Hello everyone, it's time for another story, and this one is truly shocking, bizarre, and almost unbelievable. Are you ready? Let's dive in. After 40 years of marriage, my husband dropped a bombshell on me, he admitted to having an affair with his cousin for most of our marriage. Shockingly, his cousin passed away in a car accident just three weeks ago, which has left my husband visibly depressed and acting unlike himself lately. Upon returning home from work one night, he had our two children stay over at his mother's house and prepare dinner for us. After the meal, he asked me to sit down and mentally prepare myself for what he was about to say. And then he revealed the truth about his affair. In essence, the affair began when his cousin seduced him at the age of 13, while he was 16. Their sexual involvement continued into adulthood until he started dating me. Once we got married, their activities ceased, but they resumed about four years into our marriage when she apparently convinced him to continue the affair discreetly. For context, we've been married a little over 15 years, and this situation lasted until about three weeks ago. It's beyond anything I could have ever imagined, as my husband never exhibited any suspicious behavior, like coming home late or leaving any traces of another woman. Now, I find myself at a standstill, not knowing how to proceed. I'm still in shock and unable to find the right words to say to him after his blunt confession. The emotional pain is overwhelming, and I'm left feeling lost and unsure about what to do next. Tears are still flowing, and I'm desperately seeking guidance on how to navigate this unexpected and devastating revelation. Any input or advice is appreciated. It's truly shocking to discover that she had been cheating all these years, and I'm struggling to understand why he chose this moment to confess. I acknowledge that honesty is essential, and revealing the truth is the right thing to do, but it's perplexing why he decided to open up after she's no longer with us. 
While I don't condone secrecy, one can't help but wonder why he didn't keep it a secret. Considering he has already been dishonest, the question arises, why doesn't he simply continue with it? What compelled him to confess now, even after her passing? I find it difficult to comprehend. In my opinion, I have no tolerance for infidelity, and I believe OP should prioritize their well-being and leave the situation immediately. It almost appears as if he's seeking permission to end the relationship. Though it's unclear why this discussion is on Reddit, I still stand by the advice to leave and protect oneself from potential future heartache. If he was willing to engage in such behavior with his cousin, one might worry that he could repeat it with someone else. However, that's just my personal viewpoint. Let's see what others have to say in the comments section below. Doc Sternu's comment reflects a strong sentiment regarding your husband's actions. It's not only about the cheating itself, but also the fact that he couldn't keep it hidden even though it would never have been discovered. The confession seems to be more about him seeking solace after the loss of his cousin than saving or repairing the marriage. Frankly, considering his behavior, seeking a divorce from this individual might be the best course of action. It hurts good expresses that I am feeling great. I understand that you're seeking advice on how to handle a difficult situation, and it can be challenging. It is important to prioritize your safety and well-being above all else. Consider seeking support from trusted friends, family members, or professionals who can provide guidance tailored to your specific circumstances. To all those who may disagree with my perspective, as a British citizen, it's important to note that in my country, the act of a 16-year-old individual engaging in a sexual relationship with a 13-year-old is illegal. Furthermore, it is unlawful for two individuals under the age of 16 to partake in such activities. Additionally, there are laws prohibiting intimate relations between cousins due to social norms and ethical considerations. Moreover, it is important to highlight in his defense that he explained to his wife, she was the one who seduced me. It would be interesting to see how that argument would fare in a court of law. The individual from Earth alleges that he married you out of unattainability, but it's important to acknowledge that he is not the person you initially married. It is crucial to value yourself and your well-being enough to remove him from your life. Furthermore, Mike also has something to say on the matter, it appears that this marriage has unfortunately reached a point where saving it may not be possible. Over the years, there have been significant issues of deception within the relationship, even involving a family member. I understand that you may be feeling hurt and frustrated in your current situation. It's important to approach your advice with empathy and a focus on finding resolution. It might be helpful to calmly discuss the option of separating and creating a co-parenting schedule that benefits both you and your children. Prioritizing the well-being of everyone involved, including yourself, is essential. While it's natural to feel anger, I would encourage avoiding further negativity or revenge tactics as they may prolong the healing process for all parties involved. He has recently encountered an extraordinary life lesson that is sure to leave a lasting impact. Karma has a way of catching up to people, and it seems like this person is finally facing the consequences of their actions. It's important for you to distance yourself from them and focus on your own healing and growth. You deserve better than someone who has deceived you for an entire decade. Remember, staying strong and not allowing them back into your life is crucial. It's reassuring to see that others agree with the advice given, sometimes it takes an outsider's perspective to recognize the truth. Going through a divorce can be an overwhelming experience, and it's completely understandable to feel uncertain about how to handle it. However, you are not alone in this journey. Many resources and support systems are available to help you navigate this difficult time and come out stronger on the other side. Remember that seeking professional advice, leaning on loved ones, and taking care of yourself emotionally will all play a pivotal role in helping you cope with the divorce effectively. No matter how you choose to address the situation, it ultimately lies in his hands. 
He is the one responsible for the pain caused, so perhaps it's best to let him face the consequences and find a way to rectify his actions. On a brighter note, greetings everyone. I trust you're all enjoying a wonderful day. Now, let's dive into another captivating edition of Storytime with yours truly. Get ready for a mind-blowing story that is sure to captivate and astound you. Brace yourself for an extraordinary journey into the realm of the bizarre and unbelievable. Are you intrigued? Let's plunge right into this remarkable tale. I had the most wonderful relationship with my ex-boyfriend for four incredible years. Our bond was so strong that we decided to take the next step and moved in together after two years of dating. We were overjoyed and truly content in each other's company. I had such high hopes for our future together that I even made the bold move of relocating to another country when his job required him to go to Europe. It was a testament to my commitment and deep belief in our love story. During our time together, I couldn't help but notice that his girlfriend, who happened to be a 25-year-old woman, didn't seem too fond of me. Despite my efforts to connect with her on numerous occasions, I eventually had to accept the reality of constantly receiving indifference and sarcastic comments from her. X was aware of this fact and confided in me, admitting that she had a limited circle of friends. She expressed doubts about her ability to establish meaningful connections with other women. Despite being the only woman in a group of seven guys, I must say that all of them have treated me with utmost respect. On the memorable night of December 31, 2019, we decided to ring in the new year together at a lively party. While I chose not to consume alcohol and remained completely sober, unfortunately X indulged excessively and became quite intoxicated. The following day, I was startled to discover that all of my belongings had been neatly packed. He informed me that our relationship was over and it was time for me to find a new place to live. I was caught off guard and utterly bewildered. The shock of being accused of infidelity by him left me deeply troubled. The mere thought of engaging in such a deceitful act is abhorrent to me. I vividly recall shedding tears, pleading my innocence, but despite my heartfelt protests, he still chose to excommunicate me from his life. I was touched and grateful when my best friend and her boyfriend generously offered me an open invitation to stay at their home. Their warm hospitality without any hesitation made me feel truly welcome. It's truly heartwarming to witness the genuine love and sweetness of this couple. When I look back on that difficult period, I did my best to navigate through everything. The weight of it all led me into a deep state of sadness, affecting my appetite, sleep, and overall well-being. It felt as if I were merely going through the motions, barely feeling alive. When I shared the details of what had transpired with my family, their response was deeply emotional. They empathized with me and expressed a strong desire for me to return home immediately. Given the circumstances of living in another country and the ongoing pandemic, it was a rational decision not to travel and risk their health. Unfortunately, during this time, our mutual friends and even his family members seemed to have turned against me. This situation further highlights the importance of prioritizing safety and well-being above everything else. It is unfortunate that you have been unfairly labeled as a cheater and subsequently abandoned by those who supposedly supported you. It can be disheartening when your character is called into question without proper evidence. However, it is important to remember that true friends and supporters would take the time to hear your side of the story before making judgments. Online, some individuals spread false and hurtful claims about me, labeling me as promiscuous and dishonest. The resulting rumors had a profound impact on my well-being, prompting me to completely remove myself from social media platforms and block those responsible for the slander. At that point in time, all I desired was to vanish from this virtual space. However, as fate would have it, one fortunate day I became acquainted with a companion through the introduction of my closest confidant. From the moment we first met, I couldn't help but notice how incredibly adorable and kind he was. Our friendship blossomed gradually as we began to engage in conversations and connect through video calls. 
As time went on, I found myself developing genuine feelings for him. Despite the unfortunate rumors surrounding me being labeled as a cheater, he stood by my side and refused to believe any of it showcasing his unwavering trust and understanding. I was pleasantly surprised when he invited me on a virtual date, and without hesitation, I gladly accepted. Our virtual dating journey began, and I can confidently say that it has brought immense joy into my life. He is like a guiding light, illuminating the path ahead and bringing hope into my life. However, things took an unfortunate turn when someone from my ex's circle leaked a video on Instagram. In this video, my ex's girlfriend shamelessly boasted about their deceptive plan to break us apart. It seems that she went to great lengths to manipulate the situation by paying someone to deceive my ex. This person fabricated a story suggesting that I seduced him at the New Year's party and engaged in intimate relations. After the news got out, there was a sudden influx of messages and calls from my ex's friends and family members. Even my best friend, who had my back, kindly dismissed their attempts to reach out. Then, my ex showed up at my doorstep, desperate for a conversation. I must admit, it was quite an intense and amusing experience. I believe it is important to prioritize your own personal well-being and establish healthy boundaries with others. If you feel that certain individuals are not deserving of your time and presence, it is completely valid to express your desire for them to respect your space and leave you alone. Taking care of yourself should always be a priority. I understand that you're feeling torn about the situation with X, especially considering your parents' perspective. It's natural to experience conflicting emotions when it comes to relationships and communication. While it's important to consider your parents' opinion, ultimately the decision of whether or not to open a line of communication with X should be based on what feels right for you. Take the time to think about your own feelings and boundaries. If you believe that having a conversation could potentially provide clarity or closure, it might be worth considering giving him a chance. However, if you're concerned about being too hard on him or unsure about re-establishing contact, it's perfectly valid to prioritize your own well-being and choose not to engage at this time. Remember, creating healthy boundaries is important in any relationship. Trust yourself and do what feels authentic and respectful towards both yourself and others involved. It seems like you're facing a difficult situation where trust has been broken. In making your decision, consider the fact that he didn't give you the opportunity to explain initially. It's understandable to question whether giving him the chance to explain now is necessary or fair. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide if extending that opportunity is something you're willing to do. I understand that you might feel extremely frustrated and hurt in this situation. It's completely valid to choose to move on with your new partner and embrace the joys of life. However, it's important to remember that these comments are just opinions. Let's explore the discussion below and see if we can find any helpful insights. For instance, Slytherin suggests not wasting time if they were in a similar position. It's frustrating when someone doesn't listen to your perspective and then suddenly expects you to give them the consideration they should have shown you from the start of the year. It's important to address this imbalance and communicate your feelings assertively. It's truly disheartening to witness the manipulation and harm caused by this individual's friend. However, their refusal to hear your perspective remains puzzling. Furthermore, the ease with which his friends turned against you is both alarming and disappointing. I can definitely understand why you would want to defend your friends when they're being treated poorly. It's only natural to stand up for them and protect their reputation. The way he attacked your reputation was incredibly immature and uncalled for. Is this some sort of middle school drama? It's time to face reality and take control. I hate to be frank, but if this person truly loved and valued you, they would have at least given you the courtesy of listening to your thoughts. Don't dwell on it, keep pushing forward. You deserve someone who treats you better. And Bobby says hang on tight things will get better. 
Despite being presented with the contrasting versions of events, he unreasonably dismissed her account without any meaningful discussion. It is disheartening that he did not even seem open to the possibility that you were telling the truth. Even in a long-term relationship, it's unacceptable for someone to behave the way your partner did. I can empathize with your conflicting feelings and if he had been deceived so profoundly, I would understand some sympathy. However, it's important to acknowledge that he willingly participated in causing chaos and did so without any regard for your well-being. It's perfectly understandable if you choose not to engage in a discussion with him, especially considering that he did not afford you the same courtesy when you made the decision to pack your bags. Your well-being and self-respect should always take priority in such situations. While it's understandable for your parents to express their opinions, it's important to respectfully communicate that you appreciate their perspective but ultimately will make your own decisions. Let them know that further discussion on the matter isn't necessary. As for Levi, there's no need to invite unnecessary trouble by reopening old wounds. Focus on the present and moving forward positively. It's natural for someone to feel remorseful and take responsibility for their actions when things don't work out in a relationship. In this case, your ex may genuinely reflect on his behavior and express a desire for reconciliation. He might reach out to you, hoping for another chance at building a stronger connection together. It's disheartening when someone chooses to trust others over a long-term partner. In situations like these, it's best to distance yourself and take inspiration from your friend's actions. If I were in your shoes, I would express my relief at discovering the truth and make it clear that our relationship ended the moment you prioritized someone else's words over ours. I am currently content with my life, and I believe it would be in your best interest to continue with your own journey. This approach seems to offer the most favorable outcome for both parties involved. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. I truly hope it was able to inspire, entertain, or provoke thought within you. If you enjoyed it and would like to hear more captivating stories from me, I kindly encourage you to click the subscribe button and activate the bell icon. By doing so, you will be promptly notified whenever I upload a new video, ensuring that you won't miss any future content. Feel free to share your thoughts on this story in the comments section. I highly value your opinions and suggestions as they help me improve my work. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. In the meantime, stay amazing and keep shining.